Fans Beyond Wrestling, this is Denver, Colorado, the man not the place. Thanks for joining us for a special episode of All Killer. We're going to throw it to Sugar Duncan in the ring right now, explaining the rules of the dog fight. One doesn't exist. Close enough. EYFBO. And we are here at the We Care A Lot live event with a number of fans here for our secret studio taping. Four big matches coming to you before we open the doors to the rest of the public. A very special episode of All Killer. We're kicking it off with a dogfight featuring the three new teams that have come on the scene in Beyond Wrestling over the last six months. With the Minutemen, the EYFBO, and the Hoods. Rules of the dogfight, in case Sugar Dungleton did not make it clear, is in order to win this match, you have to consecutively defeat both of the opposing tag teams. So as you will see, the men and the hoods are going to start things off. EYFBO will not be able to tag in. There will be a decision between these two teams and whoever is victorious will then go up against the EYFBO. If they're able to then defeat the EYFBO, not only have they won two consecutive falls, but they've won the match. We want to see a decisive winner here today because these teams have traded a lot of falls back and forth over the past few months. We've seen the Minutemen in the hoods trading wins. Back-to-back -back all killer tapings at the New England Pro Wrestling Academy in North Andover, Massachusetts. One by one, Brian Fury, who actually put in a word, suggested that both teams compete for Beyond Wrestling. Chris Pyro throwing the sober Pinky Sanchez, Devin Blaze overhead. Almost fell out of the ring. That time he got shoved out of the ring. But here comes Tommy Trainwreck. Dawson. Chris Pyro with such force. He was flipped inside out. And now Davy Cash comes charging in. Gets taken down with that STO. And Tommy Trainwreck had the offense from the hood scouted. And there we see Devin Blaze coming down with a senton on both of his opponents. Of course, it was this March that we saw the EYFBO thrown into the mix with these new tag teams. Victorious over the Minutemen, but falling to the hoods. And they've almost got an advantage in this match. Since by the time they enter it, both of these tag teams will have done some serious damage to one another. Once again, we see a combination out of the hoods. That is what they are known for. That and crushing motherfucking skulls. Davy Cash seems to be content targeting Devin Blaze. Caught him hard with that kick. And falling up with the elbow right in the pin for good measure. Blaze on it too. You see Devin Blaze in the wrong part of town as Chris Pyro inserts himself into the match. Chris Pyro, Davy Cash, very vocal. Now with that full Nelson, much to the chagrin of the official. 
But a bit of a miscommunication, and now Devin Blaze with that O'Connor roll. And he was able to score a fall over the hoods. Now if the Minutemen are able to do the same over the EYFBO, they will be victorious in this match. However, if the EYFBO can knock off the Minutemen, then the Hoods will have another opportunity. And this match will continue. Here we see Angel Ortiz picking away the leg of Devin Blaze, who's been on the receiving end of a beatdown for at least a couple minutes. But give Blaze credit, trying to do everything he can to take it to a fresh opponent. A great counter, a bit of misdirection. And Angel Ortiz right out of that. And taking Blaze down with that arm drag, rolling him in a position to go for that crucifix style pin. Very quick offense out of Angel Ortiz. A graduate of the SFW, Ludus Academy under the SAT. Almost got tripped up right there. Blaze kicking him right in the midsection. And with a sight set on his opponent in his corner, Devin Blaze might be taking a little too much time at this moment get sunk in. His foot caught up on the rope, just a glancing blow. So brings himself back into the ring. And now with that cradle, instead of going for the pin, nailing that standing moonsault. The action fast and furious between the Minutemen and EYFPO. Now Devin Blaze slowing things down with that trapezius hold. Trying to suck all of the energy out of the right arm of the funky monkey, Angel Ortiz. As he sensed that Ortiz was getting back up to his feet, grabbed him on front face lock and brought him over to his corner. For Tommy Trainwreck to attack. Trainwreck with the cat kick. And keep in mind, the Hoods are not allowed to interject themselves into the contest at this point. This is a singles match between the EYFBO and the Minutemen. The only way the Hoods will be able to participate is if this match continues, if the EYFBO can knock off the Minutemen. If the Minutemen score two consecutive falls over both opponents, they have won the match and picked up two points for both members of their team. Look at the leg drop from Tommy Trainwreck. Surprising agility out of the big man. Can't keep Angel Ortiz down. The only competitor we have not seen get any action in this dogfight is Mike Drastic. As Devin Blaze goes right back to that trapezius hole, trying to keep Angel Ortiz subdued. Ortiz back up to his feet. Devin Blaze continues to bring the fight with those forearms. Sends him off the ropes right to that forearm. Now with the leg hooked. Just one second away from having this match won. Here comes Tommy Trainwreck. A big clubbering blow right to the back. With another form. He's going to be careful though. He doesn't want his opponent to get too close to his partner. And I think that's exactly what happened right there. The blind tag out of the EYFBO. And Drastic with that moonsault launching himself off of his partner's back. At the expense of Tommy Trainwreck. Tommy Trainwreck going to the floor. And there we see a tag to Devin Blaze. Lucha rules in effect for this dog fight. I think that Devin Blaze walked into a mess. Some tag team offense. The power bomb and neck breaker combination. His partner sold him down the river. And there we see the EYFBO knocking off the Minuteman. And now they'll have the opportunity to knock off two consecutive opponents because the Hoods are once again entered back into the contest. The Minutemen will not be able to interject themselves into this bout unless the Hoods are victorious over EYFBO. And I think it would certainly be a feather in the cap of EYFBO. If they're able to knock off really the two teams that started this resurgence, this refocus on tag team wrestling in Beyond Wrestling in the Minutemen and the Hoods. Of course, the Minutemen and the Hoods are storied rivalry for a number of years all over New England. So 
it's going to be interesting to see how the EYFBO can match up against that. So Drastic not wasting any time right there. Trying to get one over on Chris Pyro. Pyro and his partner Davey Cash have had a couple minutes to try and recover. A bit fresher going into this next portion of the matchup. Now tying up Knuckles. Mike Drastic not looking for a test of strength. Instead, taking Chris Pyro down to the mat. Bringing him right into that wheelbarrow position where Pyro is able to nail the arm drag. Now Drastic springboarding off the ropes. Takes Pyro down with an arm drag of his own. Able to sidestep him. Pyro lands on his feet. Jumping over, going for that sunset flip. Drastic up and over his opponent. Kicked him right in the back. Pyro had no idea where Mike Drastic was. So far this bout proving to be an excellent showcase of all three teams. But who is going to come out on top? Right now, EYFBO working over on the hoods. Chris Pyro caught with a number of kicks. Popped up for that inverted powerbomb face buster combination. And with a sense of urgency, Davy Cash trying to knock Angel Ortiz off of his partner to break up the pin. Be careful here. Certainly don't want to risk disqualification because if the Hoods are disqualified right here, then EYFBO will be victorious in the dogfight. Now bring it over Chris Pyro to Mike Drastic. Decides to take a shot at the arm. Now a solid form right to the side of the jaw. Chopping away at the chest. Going to think he's going to be looking to send him off the ropes. I spoke too soon. Instead, that snapmare plays him right in the center of the ring where he can connect with a number of kicks and open hand strikes before following it up with an elbow. That was a lazy cover. He really needed a lot more coverage on that lateral press. He could have gotten that by hooking the leg. But seems content to really dictate the pace of this contest. Drastic has slowed things down, but when he went for the Irish whip that time, Pyro had a reversal. Now we've got the illegal two on one as Angel Ortiz is arguing with the official. His Latin temper getting the better of him. Davy Cash comes charging with that flying forearm and Angel Ortiz quick to break up that pin. Davy Cash gonna have to keep the Hood's chances of winning the dogfight alive, trying to pick up a victory over Mike Drastic. That would reintroduce the Minutemen into this contest and while I can't believe that the official didn't see that. Obviously looking at the shoulders of Mike Drastic, which were pinned to the mat, but only because Davy Cash was able to hold onto the rope to counter the pin attempt on a Mike Drastic. Now the Minutemen introduced back into this match, and we're back to square one. Oh! Devin Blaze launched out of that pin, caught with a kick, and sent overhead with that exploder suplex. Tommy Trainwreck charging in. Breaking up that pin attempt. Because if the Hoods are victorious over the Minutemen right here, then they will have won the dog fight. Again, looking for two consecutive falls over both sets of opponents. They've already defeated the EYFBO, albeit by nefarious means. There we see the bus driver on a Tommy train wreck. I'm honestly surprised the official counter that Devin Blaze has not rolled himself, or at least had not rolled himself to the floor. Again, with the Lucha Tag rules in effect. Referee's giving these guys a lot of leeway. And there we see the Face Buster Ace Crusher combination out of the Minuteman. And they were able to pick up the fall right there. Davy Cash just a step behind. The Minutemen are going to be forced to go to their corner. But here comes Mike Drastic. Tommy Trainwreck doing what he can to eat those shots, falling up with a big boot. Drastic low bridge him right there. Trainwreck catching himself on the apron. Oh, God. Kicked right in the side of the face. Drastic jumping up and over, but just to 
pulled down the ropes for Angel Ortiz. Surprising distance on that flying body press. The suicide time through the ropes. Taking out Tommy Trainwreck. Mike Drastic, I think he's gonna sight set on Tommy Trainwreck as well. He's gonna keep an eye out for Devin Blaze. Devin Blaze taking him down with that Hurricane Rana. As Drastic was really trying to build some momentum, ricocheting off those ropes. Devin Blaze going for a dive on the floor. Angel Ortiz able to defend himself. But Tommy Trainwreck now through the ropes. I think Angel Ortiz thought he was safe avoiding contact with Devin Blaze, but it was just a bit of a misdirection. Out of the minute, man, and now, coming off the top of the crossbody to the floor, these guys are laying it all on the line. These are some insane risks. Then again, if the Minutemen are able to knock off the EYFBO in this fall, they will have been victorious in the dogfight. As they were able to defeat the Hoods once again. And that's gonna stick in the craw of the Hoods. Here comes Drastic, no hands, flipping over the top rope. Doing some damage to his partner, but his opponents in the process. Now he's gonna be looking to target Devin Blaze. He's gonna bring him back into the ring to try and pin him. Devin Blaze and Mike Drastic, the legal men right here. Mike Drastic, there's Devin Blaze in that front face lock. Oh, but the inside cradle. And check this out, the hoods, making sure to reverse the position so that this match will continue. If Devin Blaze scored the fall over Mike Drastic, then the Minutemen would have been victorious in the dogfight, but the Hoods illegally interjecting themselves behind the official's back to make sure that the EYFBO won that fall. But now the Hoods, I mean, their work is cut out for them. They have to defeat not only the EYFBO, but the Minutemen. There we see the Hoods stomp, hook in the trunks, and the Hoods are knocked off EYFBO. But so far, we've seen the Minutemen defeat them twice consecutively in this contest. Well, let's see if the Hoods are going to be able, or I should say, let's see if the Minutemen are going to be able to knock off the Hoods for a third time in this dogfight to keep their chances alive. Devin Blaze comes charging and elevated up and over, catches himself on the apron. Davy Cash caught with him. Two kicks, one to the face, one to the back of the head, and Tommy Trainwreck is geared up for something dangerous in the corner. The elevation drop kick as we see the back brain kick from Devin Blaze. Now he's gonna hooked up in that full Nelson. Oh! The face buster fought it up immediately with the dragon suplex. And I think we're gonna see the Minutemen knock off the hoods for a third time. Guys, don't waste too much time. Roll over Chris Pyro, hook the leg and get the pin. Wow, Pyro kicked out. Tommy Trainwreck sending Pyro over to his partner. Able to get out of the way of the clothesline from Davey Cash. But got caught with the super kick and the lung blower and the ace crusher. What a combination out of the hoods. The leg is hooked. And just a second away from winning the dogfight, Devin Blaze having to break up that pin. Number of forearm shots from Davy Cash. Tommy Trainwreck sent hard to the floor. There's Pyro climbing to the top rope. He's got Devin Blaze by his hair. Trying to pull him up there, but Blaze fighting to keep this match alive. Solid shot to the side of the head. Now he's following him up to that top rope. What is he looking for from this position? And there we see a low blow from Davy Cash. Again, the official with so many other competitors to check on in this contest. And the hood stomp does the trick. One, two, three. And the hoods have won the dogfight with consecutive pins over EYFBO and the Minutemen. Of course, anybody with a working set of eyes could see all the shortcuts that these guys took along the way. 
But at the end of the day, a win is a win. And while all of these teams have traded wins and losses over the past couple months, this certainly elevates Davey Cash and Chris Pyro over their opponents. Their rivals, not only the Minutemen, but now their new rivals in the EYFBO. Tons of crazy action to start things off here at this secret all-killer taping. $15 for promo pictures and t-shirts. In this corner, we have David Starr. Yeah. And in this corner, a standout of the CZW Academy, Black Dragon. Here we're getting our first look of David Starr. I guess at a, I guess you could say at a live event. I don't know. It's kind of hard to classify this All Killer taping, but David Starr made his debut for Beyond Wrestling. Has competed at the last two All Killer tapings at the CCW Academy, and Latin Dragon, a competitor that we have not seen for almost two years, but making his return finally to Beyond Wrestling. While well, both of these competitors, regulars at the CCW Academy. I'm going to say that I'm going to give Latin Dragon the advantage in this contest because he does have more experience. Got Sugar Dunkerton leading the countdown before the bell is sounded. The official checking both of these guys for weapons right here. I don't think that David Starr will bring any weapons to the ring. I'm not sure where he can fit it, to be honest with you. Once again, checking Latin Dragon to see if he's introduced any weapons. I've got to assume, because these guys train together, they're probably not going to be looking to take any shortcuts, as we had seen the Hoods do in the dogfight just a few moments ago. I could be wrong. Hey, at the end of the day, a win's a win. I don't endorse that type of behavior. There we see David Starr trying to trying to match the agility of the Latin Dragon. I think he's going to be outclassed in that department. He's probably going to have to, uh, you know, use what brought him to the dance, which is going to be his strength. David starting to take one look at him. Obviously a very strong individual. Then again, a lot of times what it comes down to is technique, and that's why I said I do think Latin Dragon does have an advantage because he does have more experience. And therefore, you've got to think he's going to have a more fine skill set coming into this contest. There we see him float over, applying that side headlock. That's exactly what Starr was looking for. The Dragon staying one step ahead of him. David Starr rolling him off. Taking Latin Dragon down with that side headlock right in the center of the ring. Great placement. It's going to make it very difficult for Dragon to escape this hole. A veteran maneuver out of the rookie, and we see Dragon trying to get up once again. And now David Starr rolling him around the ring with a series of headlock takeovers in order to be able to maneuver him right back into the center. I've never seen that before. Dragon really struggling to get back up to a vertical base right here. And instead of going for shots in the midsection, was looking to counter at the wrist. But David Starr sending him off the ropes, couldn't trip him up. Latin Dragon avoiding contact. And instead sending David Starr down with that schoolboy. Sweeps out the legs, goes for a lateral press. And Dragon, as he pops himself up to his feet, using his momentum against his opponent to take him back down. Now both these guys get in each other's face. As we've practically got a stalemate now. Not sure who the fans have gotten behind at this point. So far, I think she's pretty pumped up. The competitive nature of this bout. Yeah, the first time either of these competitors have been in a Beyond Wrestling live event here at Bridgewater, Massachusetts. So it's going to be the first time that a number of our fans have got a look at them. Dragon able to catch himself on the apron. Kick right to the face. Now Dragon perched up on that top rope. The flying cross body block. Only good for a two count. And I 
Patrick Van Glant dragging his one himself some new fans here with that aerial offense. Sending David Starr back down to the mat. Now that corkscrew moonsault right into the pin. Couldn't put him away. Dragon questioning the count of the official. And I think that second might have cost him. Here we see David Starr trying to mount a comeback. A number of chops. Really fired away on the chest. A Latin dragon trying to knock that wind out of his lungs. He can't breathe, he can't wrestle. David Starr, great elevation up and over, avoiding contact. Oh, Latin dragon got dumped on his head with that German suplex. One, two, only a two count. The official checking on Latin dragon, see if he's gonna be able to compete. He did kick out of that maneuver. Otherwise lifeless, perhaps kicking out an instinct alone. The official making sure that the most serious damage was done during that exchange, but I think Latin Dragon might have been playing possum. Sidestepping the kick. Able to get out of the angle slam attempt. Oh! The one foot drop kick with enough momentum to propel himself over. That was a close call, Star. In danger of being pinned right there. I think he really got rocked with that kick to the face. Dragon caught him right on the point of the jaw, and now we see that's where he's holding his opponent while he drives his knee in between the shoulder blades. Star just too strong. Get the inside cradle. And that time, Dragon going for the kick. Star able to avoid contact with the schoolboy attempt. Folding press. A reversal position. These two going back and forth, trading near falls. Latin Dragon right in that Jackknuff style pin. There again we see the strength of David Starr on display, powering himself up and looking to convert this into a backslide. Now instead going for that rolling form. Latin Dragon stacked him up with that Dragon suplex. Shooting that half Nelson. Ah, if he hooked the leg, that would have been it. We saw the way David Starr with his powerful legs was able to shift his body's weight to shrug his opponent off his shoulders in order to be able to kick out. Nevertheless, with this match continuing, Latin Dragon with a handful of hair, the official admonishing him. Kick to the side of the head. Taking too much time though. Take it down hard with that backdrop suplex. One, two. Only good for a two count. David stars beside himself. Trying to shake the cobweb. He's gonna keep the attack on Latin Dragon if he wants to pick up the victory. That forearm met with an open hand slap. Star responding with one of his own. Oh, now a headbutt on a Latin Dragon. Dragon really finding the mark with these kicks. And now he wants to try and beat Star at his own game. Oh! A glancing blow. Latin Dragon turned inside out though. And now David Starr signaling for that knockout forearm. Dragon had it scouted out of the way. And from that wheelbarrow between the legs and Latin Dragon stealing the victory here with a great pinning combination. Enough to keep his opponent down for three seconds. And Latin Dragon victorious over David Starr. Latin Dragon successful in rectifying his one and only defeat here in Beyond Wrestling at the expense of David Starr. Again, David Starr looking for that forearm, but Latin Dragon from that wheelbarrow right between the legs. With all of his body's weight on his opponent's shoulders, David Starr could not kick out. 
nothing but respect between these two competitors representing Combat Zone Wrestling here today at the secret All Killer Taping. different format for this episode of All Killer as we normally do not do in-ring introductions. But we do have some fans in attendance here at the Bridgewater Knights Columbus for this secret All Killer studio taping. Certainly appreciate the outpour of support from the fans as this We Care A Lot event has been designed as a fan appreciation show. Fans able to pay what they want for tickets but those that paid $20 or more are in attendance here for four bonus bouts. Of course, we saw the dog fight with Minutemen, EYFBO, and the Hoods, where the Hoods were victorious. We've got two back-to-back -back CCW Showcase matches. We saw the Latin Dragon victorious over David Starr, but now two of the more tenured members of the CCW roster taking it to each other. Sozio, the former Niles Young, not waiting for the official to check Rory Mondo for weapons, and that could have been a stupid mistake. So if there's anybody coming into Beyond Wrestling today that may have weapons on them, it could be Rory Mondo. Rory Mondo, that flipping cannonball. Taking out Sozio on the floor. Rory Mondo, very impressive. Weathering the storm of Sozio, but I mean, this guy's as tough as they come. He is a deathmatch wrestler. Not only the punishment you can inflict on your opponent with your hands, your feet, but also incorporating weapons, tables, ladders, chairs, thumbtacks, fluorescent light tubes, barbed wire, fire. Rory Mondo has done it all, and at such a young age, it's allowed him to travel the world. Now Rory Mondo with Sozio Cedar right there, comes in with a number of kicks. Comes charging in, but Rorio, excuse me, Sozio caught Rory. Oh, just put him right through that chair. Yeah, don't forget, Sozio can get hardcore too, as well as, well as all these guys. Ultra violent, if you will, that CZW influence. It was Rory Mondo that introduced the chair into this bout, and it cost him. Caught hard, the edge of the chair right on his kidneys. Tell you what, you do damage to your kidney. That's one of the most painful things that you can experience as a human being. Then we see Rory Mondo struggling to get back up to his feet. Sozio arguing with some of the fans. But if Sozio comes back in the ring, Rory just bum rushing him in the corner. Connects with a number of shots to the chest. Rory doing the best that he can to push the pain in his lower back out of his mind. But just a little bit too slow in that exchange. See Sozio with the snap suplex rolling through and now right into that submission. Sozio with the double underhook. Now trying to bring Rory back up to his feet. And right into that Tiger Bomb. Rory kicking out. And I think just as much damage as Sozio has done to his opponent, he has done to his opponent's pants too. I think Rory Mondo's pants have broken down. And honestly, in a contest like this, where he's probably gonna be trying to adjust these pants to make sure that he's got full range of motion running in with these kicks, he's gonna worry about his opponent instead. 
And there you see, I mean, Rory's concerned about it. Instead of trying to hold up his pants, he should be trying to fight back. Sozio fired away. And Rory's gonna be careful, he doesn't get tripped up. The official checking on him right here. What a bizarre set of circumstances. Rory's trying to take those pants off because they're caught around his ankles. And instead, Sozio just ripping them off. I'm surprised he discarded him. I thought he would have been using that as an implement to choke him. And one of the wrestlers has given Rory Mondo another pair of trunks. But while he struggled to put them on, Sozio kicked him in the face. What is going on right here? Turtle and El Sincaro helping Rory Mondo put his pants on. And while he's got his pants situation straight, finally he's able to start mounting a comeback on Sozio. Oh, caught with that snap slam. Still kicks out. I can honestly say I have never seen something like this happen in a professional wrestling match, contest, bow, exchange, whatever you want to call it. What can you call it at this point? Now Rory Mondo, not distracted by his failing pants. Perhaps can focus just on Sozio. The number of forearms. Sozio cuts him off with that knee to the midsection. Telegraph that back body drop. Rory Mondo looking for a pinning combination, was unable to get it. But that time with that released Northern Lights suplex, able to take Sozio overhead. Kicks him in the chest, and again. Sozio just eating the shots, firing away with a slap to the face. Now we see the step up ends at Curry from Rory Mondo. Rory Mondo, sight set on Sozio, he's got his opponent down on the mat. He wants to bring him to a vertical base, just so he can reposition him with that snap there. Oh, kicked him right in the face. No punches pulled out of Rory Mondo. The official checking to see if Sozio can compete. Rory Mondo looking to take to the air. Perhaps going for that signature double stomp. Taking too much time. And Sozio pulling the legs out from underneath Rory Mondo who came crashing the back of his skull. Heart of the buckle, the flying Yakuza kick. His opponent stacked up, Rory Mondo's beaten. No! And that goes to show you just how tough Rory Mondo is. The years of conditioning and deathmatch wrestling, but Sozio scooping him up on the shoulders. Rory Mondo rolling through. Couldn't keep him down. He can't keep eating those kicks. One, two, oh! The official's hand I thought came down for a third time, but telling the timekeeper only a two count. Now once again up on the shoulders! Let's take another look at that, all right? A jumping tombstone pile driver. Ain't nobody kicking out of that. Fans here really giving it to Sozio. Who I think had an unfair advantage throughout this bout. Through the wardrobe malfunction suffered by one Rory Mondo. I mean, give Rory credit. Main event time here. All Killer 19, the secret taping here at the We Care A Lot live event before we open the doors to the public and get things kicked off. And while All Killer is beyond wrestling's approach on television style wrestling, we have the Ring of Honor television champion, Matt Taven in the house, going one on one with Dave Cole for the first time ever. We don't have TV restrictions. But 
then I don't think you can upload a video more than 10 hours on YouTube. So a 10 hour time limit. The last time that we saw Dave Cole here competing in the Bridgewater Knights Columbus, he did so alongside tag team partner Brian Fury, where he walked out on the match. But I think Dave Cole, understanding the opportunity at hand right here, perhaps not as concerned with the ranking system in Beyond Wrestling. Whether or not he's able to pick up a point by defeating an opponent, uh, you gotta think he's probably gonna be extremely concerned with picking up a victory over the current Ring of Honor television champion, a standout in the New England scene in this first time encounter. Because if you're able to knock off one of the most high profile champions on the scene right now, that's gonna open eyes and turn heads. That's what Dave Cole has an opportunity to do right here, which is presented to him here by Beyond Wrestling. Again, even if Dave Cole is not concerned by picking up the victory because he's gonna be able to pick up a point, certainly uh, you know, a lot more than the, on the line, realistically speaking. Dave Cole going with an arm ringer. Matt Taven immediately showing off his agility, cartwheeling, and reversing the position. Now with that wrist lock applied, Dave Cole with a counter of his own, now going into that top wrist lock. Taven, able to connect to that drop toe hold, taking Dave Cole down to the mat. Of course, Matt Taven competing a number of times here at the Bridgewater Knights Columbus as well. Going one-on-one -on -one with Julian Starr, and again against Jocka. Matt Taven last competing for Beyond Wrestling at Armory Amore. Competing in a four-way against Kovald, Jocka and A.R. Fox, but Matt Taven has returned to Beyond Wrestling. He has certainly elevated his profile since we last saw him. Again, the current reigning Ring of Honor television champion, perhaps in part to Hoopla. No Hoopla in attendance tonight, although Dave Cole does have to be concerned about Matt Taven's girlfriend, Casey Ray, on the floor. Matt Taven. Not interested in, in testing to see whether or not Dave Cole is stronger than him. Instead, outsmarting Dave Cole. Now some of the wrestlers giving Taven a little bit of shit, telling him that he should be facing the hard cam. As a television champion, he should know that. Once again, all killer. It's beyond wrestling's approach our own personal version of television wrestling. Stringing together a number of matches. Certainly a lot of action that we provided with the last 18 episodes of All Killer. I think episode 19 has proven to be much in the same vein, although we've taken a bit of a different format here. Wow, look at the speed out of Matt Taven. Able to counter the hip toss with that rolling cradle. Dave Cole right to the crucifix. Taven sweeping out the legs right to that jackknife. Dave Cole pushing him off into that pin. A great exchange of holds. Taven up to his feet first, able to see that Dave Cole's looking for that clothesline. Ducking underneath, slipping through the leg, shrugged off. Dave Cole catching him with that boot. Taven just collapsed. He might be knocked out. The official checking on him. Dave Cole quick to get to the pin. And Taven still kicking out.
can't always agree with Dave Cole's tactics, but I think that he has certainly earned the respect of the fans here at the Bridgewater Knights of Columbus. Last year we saw him compete in a two out of three false match with Aaron Epic that was so competitive, the fans demanded it, and we delivered a three out of five false contest. However, Dave Cole coming up short in both of those efforts. We see him standing toe to toe here with the Ring of Honor television champion. That tilt to world slam. Only good for a two count. There we see Casey Ray on the floor, perhaps starting to get concerned about her, her men's chances, whether or not he's gonna be able to successfully defeat Dave Cole here. Dave Cole looking to send Taven for the ride. Taven put on the brakes. Dave Cole coming up and over. Taven looking for that moonsault body press. Dave Cole able to sidestep him. And the suplex close to the corner. Dave Cole telling Casey Ray to get out of the way. And there we saw just the momentary distraction, just one second he took his eyes off of Matt Taven to check to see where Casey Ray was to see if she was gonna interject herself. And that was enough for Taven to drive Dave Cole skull first into the buckle and kick him in the head. And now Casey Ray following Dave Cole to the floor, punched him right in the face. I don't think Dave Cole saw who hit him going after one of the fans. Now Matt Taven looking for a dive to the floor. But too many fans around ringside. Again, a bit of an unusual format for our all-killer taping. And Dave Cole using this opportunity to crawl underneath the ring. Now trying to lure Taven into that trap. Taven had that kick scouted. But going for the punch, he got low bridged by Dave Cole. And now Dave Cole with the cannonball off the apron. And taking, taking the moment to hug Johnny Cockstrong. Dave Cole getting in the face of Casey Ray, making sure that she's not getting involved any further. Again, taking his sights off of his opponent. Matt Taven as he brings him into the ring, to making sure that Casey Ray is not gonna get involved. Now Dave Cole, with his sights set on Matt Taven, looking to connect with this kick. Taven holding one leg, Casey Ray holding the other. And Dave Cole kicked right in the face. Now Matt Taven trying to tie up that knee. Dave Cole's right leg is trapped in those ropes. I'm just trying to push him off the apron to try and stretch some of those ligaments and tendons. Very delicate behind the kneecap. Oh, Taven kicking him right in the ribs. It's not done. And now Matt Taven arguing with the official about getting in the ring, and there we see Case Gray, a number of kicks in that form, right to the temple. Could have knocked out Dave Cole on the floor. Well, the official doing his best to try and enforce the rules, but by doing so, allowed for Matt Taven and Casey Ray to allow the numbers game to benefit them. Certainly not the most ethical decision made today. That was probably whoever decided to bring out a pair of shorts you wore. After his pants broke down. I don't know what Matt Taven's signal for here. Perhaps a stalling vertical suplex. Spinning with it. Dave Cole's a big man to keep up for that long. Taven comes crashing down. Kipping right back up to his feet. Now Casey Ray telling Matt Taven to pose for the camera. Wasting time right here. Going up against Dave Cole. Dave Cole firing a number of shots in the midsection. Matt Taven shut him down with that boot. Matt Taven perhaps looking for that springboard moonsault. Oh, instead the corkscrew. Connects to the chest of Dave Cole. Folds him up. Can't beat him. Matt Taven mockingly saying that he's gonna position Dave Cole in front of the hard cam. By doing so, turning his back to the majority of the fans here in attendance. 
Dave Cole really fighting to try and find that second win. Firing off a number of shots in the midsection of Matt Taven. Caught him with that forearm. Looking to come off the ropes. Matt Taven, perfect execution on that drop kick. Stopping Dave Cole right in his tracks. But fixing his hair. Before going in the pit. Dave Cole trying to get the attention of the official. Making sure that the official knows that he is still able to continue. Although perhaps Dave Cole thought that he may, may have been pinned to the mat for three seconds. Maybe just checking to see if this match is going to continue. David building up ahead of steam. Dave Cole slipping out of the ropes. There we see him finally catching that kick. And holding Matt Taven. Jumping over the top rope and connecting with that Tornado DDT. Dave Cole charging him with that flying boot. Now trying to climb to the top rope. Connects with a double stomp. Has Dave Cole done it right here? One, two, no! Even though Matt Taven has not put the Ring of Honor television title on the line in this match, you gotta think that he doesn't wanna go back to ROH. Having to tell all the other boys there that he suffered a loss here to Dave Cole and Beyond Wrestling. Although to me that would be nothing to be ashamed of. I think Dave Cole is one of the very best in New England. And there we see with that Moonlight Bomb, the impact of the pin! Matt Taven is still kicking out, having to dig deep to do so. But this match will continue. You don't wonder if Dave Cole is going to be looking for that Tiger Bomb or perhaps even the Tiger Smash. His modified version of the Tiger Bomb. But Matt Taven, a wild kick. Follows it up with another. And then we see the corkscrew neck breaker. That's it. One, two, three. I haven't seen many opponents kick out of that neck breaker. Matt Taven arguing with the official saying that he's given Dave Cole his best. Matt Taven climbing up to that top row, perhaps looking for a moonsault from this position. Dave Cole. Trying to stay one step ahead, causing Matt Taven to lose his balance. What is Dave Cole looking for here? A sleeper suplex off the top rope. Taven fighting off. Matt Taven sights in on Dave Cole. And instead of going for the moonsault, just knocked the ceiling pin off. Matt Taven's a big boy to be coming off the top. And that was enough to cause the distraction. Dave Cole caught him with the knees, the inside cradle. Taven still managing to keep out now. Dave Cole with those arms butterflied. Wait, the impact into the pin with the Tiger Bomb. Dave Cole, oh. I'm gonna say Dave Cole's pulled it off. He's going for the Tiger Bomb once again. Matt Taven with the reversal, stepping over. And the headlock driver. One, two, three. Man, I really thought that Dave Cole had a beat right there after the Tiger Driver. No wasted motion. The impact right in the pin had his legs over the arm of Matt Taven. But that goes to show you why Matt Taven is the Ring of Honor Television Champion. And able to step over the arm of Dave Cole and just drive it and really spiked him at an uncomfortable angle. Right on the top of his head. And Matt Taven, the Ring of Honor Television Champion, victorious here at All Killer 19. In Beyond Wrestling's take of TV wrestling, which we have dubbed All Killer, which you can see weekly here at youtube.com slash beyond wrestling. Great match between both of these guys to conclude the secret taping here at the We Care A Lot. Live event just about to get kicked off in a couple minutes. And there we see the respect from Matt Taven shown to Dave Cole. Great match.